everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany here with my co-host Harris Faulkner and Emily Campagno. Also joining us, Tammy Bruce and Jason Chaffetz. So yesterday, the president bragged that no one messes with him. Of course, he used a very different word. <laughs> No one, except maybe OPEC, because they just did. The Saudi-led oil cartel announced that it's slashing production by 2 million barrels a day. The move is expected to push our rising gas prices even higher. And it's also a slap in the face to the president and his team because they have been spending months and months trying to stop this. The president even visited Saudi Arabia last July. You remember, it's that video of the notorious fist bump between Biden and the Saudi prince. But OPEC's move reveals the failures of Biden's fist bump diplomacy. It just simply doesn't work. And now Americans, well, you're going to pay the price. You know what? It, this is amazing to me, Tammy. I saw this yesterday, the announcement of the, the cuts from uh -huh, OPEC. Uh -huh. Fist bump form policy diplomacy simply doesn't work. Yeah. And then came the headlines, uh, which were uncannily accurate. Mm -hmm. Usually they, they bury the truth for the Biden administration, but yet CNBC, White House lobbying fails to prevent OPEC plus cut. CNN, really interesting piece inside the White House's failed effort to dissuade OPEC from cutting oil production. National Review, OPEC gives Biden and U.S. consumers the middle finger. Uh, they, they tried and they failed. Yeah, they tried and they failed. And that tells you, of course, it's not just even the fist bump, right? This has got to be a combination of things when it comes to diplomacy. If another nation takes the president seriously because of strength at home, because of strength other, in other areas, if the individual himself or herself has to be taken seriously because, like with Trump, people say, oh, he was unpredictable. That was one of his strengths, that you didn't know what the guy was going to do, and that was respected in large part. Keep in mind now, as the price of oil goes up, that benefits Russia. All of their adventurism is about is comes from the price of oil and this uh, the sale of oil. Same with Iran. So that now uh, Biden has made it so that we're sending all kinds of money to Ukraine and we're effectively funding Russia because of his failure in dealing with oil. And he's already a bit, you know, put out all the, the oil out of our reserve. Uh, he keeps doing that. We're sending it to different countries. And now we actually really might need it ourselves, hmm. and it won't be there. This is failure from A to Z, just like Afghanistan. It hasn't stopped. It hasn't. And Harris, so Monday, apparently, according to the CNN report, the White House sent talking <laughs> points to the Treasury Department. Hmm. Here's what they said. Uh, they were framed as the prospect of a production cut as a total disaster, and they warn that it could be taken as a hostile act. So this is Monday. And it says that this was a months-long diplomacy effort. And in fact, they even told Janet Yellen to go find the Gulf state ministers uh -oh. to convince them not to do this, giving her specific points, <laughs> saying that you need to say that this is great political uh, risk to your reputation and relations with the United States. All of this confirmed by a senior U.S. official. Really interesting detail that just didn't. didn't wow, work. they sent Secretary Yellen, who tried to turn the abortion issue for black women into economics. That's oh right. my God. Whew. Oh boy, you, you better than out Kamala. Of that there. tells you. That tells you. <laughs> um, so these you know, yeah. let's talk about fist bump for just a second. Do we all remember why that happened? It was because it was COVID, and they had promised that the president wasn't going to be touching a lot of people, and then he got COVID shortly after that trip, that also included Israel, so on and so forth. Um, within days of that. So, but what that says sometimes, potentially, Tammy, and I was thinking about this as you were talking, is you're, you're telegraphing to the other side of that fist bump that I'm weak. That you're afraid. I'm afraid. Hmm. That I, I, I might get touched. And even though you've taken every precaution, you've told all of your 340 million constituents in America, even those, the half that didn't vote for you, um, that, you know, the end all be all is everything that I have done. Certain things you have to take a risk for. You have to stiffen your spine and take a risk. And, and it tells the world, specifically the leader of OPEC Plus, that maybe that spine isn't as stiff. So the signs of weakness happened long before the words went out in statements, mm -hmm. potentially. 
Mm -hmm. It's so true. Um, they saw Afghanistan, the world did. I mean, and the bad actors have come out and no one seems to respect the United States. Um, but the talking points are interesting because the Treasury Department got them, Jason, but it appears the press secretary didn't because here's what she said two days ago. Watch this. Aye. So we're not considering uh, new releases releases from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve uh, beyond the 180 million about about the 1 million uh, that the president announced months ago. We, we don't have anything more to share or we're not going to be uh, considering new releases. But then within 48 hours, they mm. took from the strate Strategic Petroleum Reserve 40 year low. We have a graph of that we'll put up. Well, it, it's absolutely the wrong policy. It's there in case of war and natural disaster, those types of things. You can't keep doing that. It's a Band-Aid. It's a political Band-Aid. It doesn't actually solve the problem. I, I'm struck, though. I got to tell you, Joe Biden was elected to the United States Senate before Jimmy Carter became president. So he was a sitting U.S. senator when we went through the, the crisis with oil and gas. Mm -hmm. Way back in the 70s, you would have thought that Joe Biden would have sat through and learned this lesson and said, never again will the United States of America depend on others for our economic future. Never again will we have to rely on some other country like Venezuela, Iran, Russia, or, or Saudi Arabia in order to fuel our future. But this president is so beholden to the, the far radical greenies that this is what we're left with, groveling, praying, hoping that we get somebody else to bail us out. That's what's so wrong with this picture. Did you see that picture? Can we pop that back up? Yeah, I had Jason brought that, that. To, the, to us. Yeah. yeah, you brought that today. I mean, what irony that that wow. conversation was happening, <clears throat> maybe not right for that photo, but the constellation of combos that were going on around that time. Yeah, he, Joe Biden was up for his second election to the United States Senator as a United States Senator right when Jimmy Carter was there. And it smells, feels, and looks just like Jimmy Carter. That's what he, that's what this president has done. He's doing exactly, making exactly the same mistakes. The fascinating yeah. parallel, Emily. And then all of this, what does it mean for the viewer, for the voter? You know, $2.38 is what the gas prices were at when Biden came into office. It's now about $3.28 thereabouts before this OPEC decision even happened. And you think there's a very simple answer. And no, it's not going to Venezuela, another hostile actor. It is unleashing American energy. Keystone would be pumping 800,000 barrels a day. Drilling lease is down 97% from the last administration. There's a very easy answer. And by the way, if climate change is global, it's still going to affect if you get it from Venezuela versus producing That's it here right. at home. Because they're That's so right. filthy when I they mean, produce it. I think it's it. clear that for the American voter, they see that they are the enemy. That, that, that securing American jobs is somehow the last answer in the final resort. It doesn't make any sense. This is a White House that continues to say one thing and then change their mind and favor everybody else except for the American hardworking person. So just last week they said we're not going to release any more barrels. Now they release more, set to release next month. We are up to a third of our emergency supply. That is because it is more important to this administration that they wage a war on fossil fuels. We have now agreed with Venezuela to release seven American hostages and two of Maduro's nephews that we were holding incarcerated for drug trafficking. So what does that tell the American citizen? That it's more important for us to capitulate to a socialist regime, to a dictator that starves his own people, than it is to create job opportunities on the domestic front. That we want to reward narcotics trafficking, hostage taking. But we're already and, doing that and by having an open border. And business with Venezuela than it is to create American jobs yeah. and to do this, the common sense, sensical solution. So what I see coming out of this administration, it's not just a Jimmy Carter facsimile. It's actually a worse monster because it's someone that has forgotten the 50 years of experience and it is someone who continues to create an enemy out of the American person and the American job creation. Yeah, that's right. But uh, no one bleeps with Biden, he says, except OPEC and at one point a bicycle. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.